lecture, uh, we started for non-reciprocal devices, and I said that the main component which is required to make any device non-reciprocal in nature it is ferrite. Okay, ferrite material. So uh, property of this ferrite material is that it has very high uh, magnetization property and uh, highly resistant in nature. And uh, in the range of micro frequency, it is less lossy. That's why we are using it. Otherwise, there are other magnetic materials which are uh, very highly lossy with uh, micro frequency. So we do not use them, but this ferrite is good. Okay. So just let me remind you uh, the property of this ferrite material. It exhibits a uh, Faraday rotation. So the meaning of that uh, Faraday rotation is what? Let us un uh, consider that uh, we are talking about a device which is reciprocal in nature, okay? So let us consider that this is a waveguide here, okay? And uh, you are passing a wave through it, okay? So uh, if the wave, suppose this is the electric field, which is vertically polarized and it is propagating inside this. And if suppose it is circularly, right hand circularly polarized. So if you are standing here, okay? So you will feel that that electric field, when it is moving away from you, it is going to rotate in clockwise manner. So it's a left-handed uh, circularly polarized wave, suppose. It's moving in the clockwise direction, provided that the wave is moving away from you, okay? And the wave is sent from this end to this end. Now, you, you are, if you experiment the same thing from this side, okay? And once again, the wave is sent from this side. And uh, now if you look at the rotation of the wave, still it is uh, circularly polarized, clockwise. clockwise. So once again, uh, you, will feel, you will see that the rotation will be what, something like this because it is clockwise in nature. So you can say that the, this device is actually what? Reciprocal in nature because in whatever the direction, the wave is rotating in clockwise only if the wave is moving away from me. But if the, suppose a ferrite material is introduced into this waveguide material, okay? So it's placed inside this material here. It's ferrite. Now you experiment it. So let us consider that when you're sending the wave from this end and it is going away from you. So you'll find, feel, you'll find that the rotation is what clockwise, okay? Now, if the same wave, if it is fed from this side and it is traveling in the opposite direction, means from right hand side, side to the left hand side, and still the polarization is same, that wave, it will rotate in clockwise direction. But because under the influence of this ferrite material, that it is biased in such a way that it will force the wave to rotate in one particular direction only. So if you are sending the same wave, from the other side, that is from the right hand side and it is moving toward the left hand side, still you'll expect that the wave, it should move, it should rotate in clockwise direction, but under the influence of this ferrite material, the rotation is going to take place in the anti-clockwise direction. Okay, so now the, these two situations are different. In the earlier case, whatever the direction, the rotation of the wave will be in clockwise direction because it's a left-handed, right-hand circularly polarized, sorry, left-handed circularly polarized wave. But under the influence of ferrite material, if the direction changes, then the rotation is going to change. Okay, so that's why it is called as what this behavior is called as what non-reciprocal behavior, and it is also known as what Faraday rotation. How much the wave is going to rotate? Whether one complete cycle will it will uh, rotate, or 90 degree rotation will be there, or uh, multiple of 360? It depends on the length. Okay. Now, whether it will uh, rotate in clockwise or anti-clockwise direction, that totally depends on the biasing applied to this ferrite material. So uh, the biasing is provided with the help of DC magnetic field, a strong DC magnetic field. Now, the first component which comes uh, in this is phase shifter or gyrate. Gyrator. 
So the property of the garretter is such that, that uh, if the wave is, uh, okay, instead of showing it as a wave guide, I will simply say that it's a two port device. Okay, it's a two port device. And let us consider that it's a 90 degree phase shifter. So when the wave is moved from left hand side to the right hand side, there will be a phase rotation of the wave by 90 degree. But if the same wave, if it is moved from the right hand side toward the left hand side, then there won't be any rotation of the wave. Okay, so it's a phase shifter, but it is non-reciprocal in nature. Okay, now let's see how does it work. So what is done that uh, this is a wave guide. Now there are two phase shifters actually. One is reciprocal in nature, another is non-reciprocal in nature. Okay, so if uh, this wave guide, it's a simple wave guide and straight in nature. Okay, so what happens that if I apply GE10 mode, here. So what has what what is going to happen into it? That the electric field. Let us consider. We are focusing only on the electric field and that too single component. So you can see that the electric field is bounded by the top and bottom plates plate, and it is vertically upward. Okay. And since uh, the top and bottom plate they are uh, straight, so when the wave appears on the other side, still its nature will be what like this only. It will be bounded by top and bottom and you can see it is vertically polarized. But if, suppose I just twist this wave guide, let us consider that the wave guide is what? Flexible in nature. So here it is like this, okay? This is the front end, okay? But the second end, it is simply rotated by 90 degree, like this. So now you can see that the width and the height that is got, that has got changed, okay? So it means that this end, something like this. So now electric field is bounded between top and bottom place. Here it is vertically polarized. Okay, by, by the time when it reaches to the other end, then the orientation of the electric field, it will be changed. It will be something like this. Now here you can see that on the input side here, it is vertical. The field is what vertical. Here you can see that the field is horizontal. So this is what rotation of the electric field by 90 degree. Okay. So how much uh, this rotation of the field you want, that totally depends on uh, the twist. So you can have any desired uh, this uh, twist, 45, 90 degree, 180 degree, okay? 360 is not required because for that, it should be a straight wave layer only. So it will both the, uh, the field at both the ends will be in phase, okay? So it's like this. Now, this is what uh, reciprocal device. Okay, 90 degree, if whether the wave is moving from this end to this end or from this end to this end, there will be always a rotation of uh, wave by 90 degrees. So you can say that this is a phase shifter only, but reciprocal in nature, whereas we are going to see non-reciprocal kind of thing. Okay, so what is done for that? Ferrite material is introduced. So once again, I will take this wave guide itself here, like this, it is here. And this way it is arranged and uh, bending is provided. Now this is what 45 degree bending is provided, huh? not 90 degree, but the structure, I will keep it same. Huh? Diagram is little difficult here. So it's a 45 degree phase shifter. Now this, uh, here it is horizontal waveguide, on the other side it is what vertical waveguide. Now that rectangular waveguide is actually changed into what circular waveguide, something like this. 
and then it is changed once again into horizontal wave gauge. like this and in between there is a ferrite material which is placed ferrite material i will show it like this okay now our goal is what to design a gyrator which is 180 degree phase shifter okay like this so uh, what is done now this is what uh, your waveguide twist, which is going to provide a 90 degree phase shift. So how it is done, it, when you're feeding a wave, which is what vertically polarized because it's T10, okay? So that wave will get rotated by 90 degree in anti-clockwise direction. And this ferrite material, it is biased in such a way that it is going to rotate the wave in anti-clockwise direction by 90 degree. So total phase, uh, total rotation of the wave will be what 180 degree. This 90 degree and 90 degree from here. Okay, so it is going to be what 180 degree. And when uh, once that uh, wave is rotated by 180 degree, now since uh, there is no ferrite material, okay, so the wave without any further rotation, it will move and it will appear on the other side. So it becomes what 90 degree phase shifter. Okay. Similarly, you can think for the uh, 90 degree, total 90 degree. So, uh, sorry, oh, well, I have written here what 45 degree. So, we'll talk about the uh, 45 degree. This, sorry, total 90 degree phase shifter. Okay, and similarly, you can think of any uh, this uh, degree of uh, this phase shift. 135 180 degree okay so 45 degree rotation from this waveguide and 45 degree rotation from this ferrite material so total rotation of the wave will be what 90 degree okay now so if the wave is sent from this into this and so first 45 degree will be introduced because of this stage because the waveguide is twisted by 45 degree and the another 45 degree rotation will be because of the ferrite material but the care should be taken that the ferrite material is going to rotate this field a mechanical twist that is waveguide twist that also should introduce this rotation of the uh, wave in anti-clockwise direction only then only the 45 and this 45 will get added so 45 45 it becomes 90 degree so when the wave is moving from the left hand side to the right hand side, there will be a phase shift of 90 degree because of the rotation of the electric field by 90 degree overall rotation. But if the wave, same wave, if it is sent from right hand side to the left hand side, then what happens? So what happens that now when the wave is sent from this side, okay, I will use another code. So in earlier case, I said that if the wave is moving from left hand side to the right, right hand side, the wave initially it is vertically polarized. Then there is a rotation of the electric field by 45 degree. Okay. And when it moves to the right material, then further rotation of the field by 45 degree so total phase shift of 90 degrees achieved and that wave is finally uh, uh, collected on the other side but if the second case if it is considered that is the wave is moving from the right hand side to the left hand side so what happens so let us consider that here the field is what vertically polarized because of the, the nature of the waveguide okay so here you can see that the field is what vertically placed like this and we have to check what happens to the orientation of this field when it comes here okay so the field is vertically polarized now that uh, wave 
uh, here uh, you can say that the ferrite material is there in between okay so now that wave it passes through the ferrite material so what happens that that ferrite material it will bend this wave by what 45 degree in which direction clockwise sorry anti-clockwise because it's ferrite material so there will be a phase shift of 45 degree so uh, the wave electric field it has got changed its electrical rotation but 45 degree in this direction okay because it's a ferrite so its job is to bend the uh, wave in one fixed direction only what will be the direction of propagation but when the same electric field which is what tilted by 45 degree when it passes through the mechanical twist mechanical twist which is provided by what uh, this uh, waveguide orientation of the waveguide twisting the waveguide so the waveguide is designed in such a way that the wave when it uh, passes through this uh, waveguide twist of 45 degree then that 45 degree twist is provided in what in anti-clockwise direction okay so here you can see that when the wave is passing from this end when it passes through the ferrite material since the ferrite material is designed in such a way that whatever the direction of the propagation the rotation of the field will be what in uh, anti-clockwise direction by 45 degree so when your uh, move the wave is passing from this side so if you'll see the rotation so rotation is actually in the clockwise direction because it is non reciprocal in, in nature but when the same wave passes through the mechanical twist of 45 degree okay which is designed to rotate the wave in what anti-clockwise direction since it is reciprocal in nature so whatever the wave passes through this mechanical twist so that uh, anti-clockwise sorry yes anti-clockwise direct rotation in the uh, 45 degree rotation of the wave is going to take place in clockwise direction this time It will be sorry anti-clockwise direction so what happens that rotation of the field by 45 degree because of the ferrite and rotation of the field because of this mechanical twist 45 degree further but since the rotation introduced by the ferrite material in it and the rotation introduced by the mechanical twist they are opposite in direction so here 45 degree twist and here minus 45 degree twist so total phase shift is going to be what zero so you can see that the orientation of the electric field when it was entering here and when it has reached to this end they are same it means that the device is going to provide a 90 degree phase shift when the wave is moving from left hand side to the right hand side but when the same wave when it is moving from right hand side to the left hand side the rotation is going to be of zero degree that's why it is called as what non-reciprocal in nature so it's a uh, phase shifter device you can say we require phase shifting devices in multiple situations so this is one of the non reciprocal device similarly if you are going to make it what 180 degree phase shifter then uh, the total uh, phase shift should be what 90 degree from the ferrite material and 90 degree from the mechanical twist so in one direction this both the 90 degree should get added and in the reverse direction this 90 degree uh, rotation from individual component should be opposite to each other so the cancellation will take place and there wouldn't be any change in the phase of the wave now uh, there comes another device it is called as isolator this we are having in our college so isolator is simply you uh, you can you are very well aware with what the behavior of the diode okay so you can see that the diode it's a uh, unidirectional device so you can say it's non-reciprocal in nature and this uh, when uh, uh, you're biasing uh, positively it is biased then the resistance offered by the diode is what zero ideally and when it is reverse bias then the uh, this resistance is what infinite so you can see that the behavior of the diode in different direction it is different in one direction it is not offering any resistance but in other direction it is offering infinite resistance so basically you can see that diode can be used for uh, isolation okay for a of the ac wave or the dc also okay 
So same is the behavior of what uh, this isolator in case of waveguide. It is going to allow the flow of signal from one end to the other in one, in one particular direction. But if the direction is changed, then there won't be any propagation of the wave. So how it is achieved? So let's see. So we need a phase shifter of uh, 90 degree. Okay, we'll draw the entire part. Here, this is the one end of the waveguide. Now a mechanical twist is required. Okay, like then from that rectangular waveguide is converted into what circular waveguide, and then from circular to rectangular. like this okay so here there is a ferrite material in this it's the structure is almost similar to uh, the gyrator only but the difference is what here at the beginning and at the end we are having lossy material it's a strip here which is placed like this and here also there is a strip which is placed on the surface of the waveguide so this and this they're what lossy material so lossy material means what if the wave is passing through it then it will get attenuated but conditionally conditionally means what if the electric field let us consider that the orientation of the electric field under t10 mode it is what vertical yeah. so the interaction between the electric field and this material will be negligible so this wave it can pass through this without any issue okay so now uh, this is what 90 degree phase shifter okay but and uh, this ferrite material this also is going to provide 90 degree phase shifting but this time this phase shifting is done in such a way that if this is designed this mechanical twist is designed to rotate the orientation of the field in anti-clockwise by what 90 degree when the wave is what moving away okay so similarly when the wave is what uh, passed from the other direction that is from the right hand side then also it is going to rotate the field by what 90 degree in anti-clockwise direction but since the direction has got reverse it will appear as what clockwise from this side from the left hand side okay now uh, this ferrite material as i said that it is going to uh, rotate the field exactly opposite to what this mechanical twist so when the wave is what propagating from left to right then this wave will get rotated like this so now you can see that the rotation because of the of oh, will rotate uh, clear this part huh? so you can see that when the wave it passes through this device so the mechanical twist it is going to rotate the electric field in anti-clockwise direction by 90 degree when the same wave it passes through the ferrite material then the rotation of the wave is what in now in clockwise direction so total overall rotation will be what it will get cancelled out so what is going to happen when the field it reaches here still it is what vertically polarized okay so while entering here it was vertically polarized when it leaves here then also it is what vertically polarized so you can see that the interaction between the electric field at the entry and at the end with what this lossy material that is almost zero so there wouldn't be any loss of the wave loss uh, of the power in the wave when the wave is what moving from left to the right hand side okay now what happens change the direction of the propagation now the wave is what it is moving from this end okay when it is passed so what happens that the wave uh, now the ferrite material is designed in such a way that it is going to rotate the field in this direction whatever is shown here like this so what happens that when i will draw it the field component here so field when it is entering it is vertically polarized okay when it reaches somewhere uh, when it passes through the ferrite material and 
appears on the other side of the ferrite material it has got rotated by 90 degree okay like this so this is the reference line so 90 degree rotation I will change this angle huh, because uh, it's 45 degree here and 45 degree here also no one is saying that 1990 becomes one okay so what will be the angle but in the forward direction the wave will remain vertical okay that's why there was no no, no issue in that case but when the wave is traveling in the reverse direction then it matters okay so let us consider the case is what once again 45 45 degrees so total phase shift will be what one uh, sorry 90 degree in one direction and zero degree in one direction so zero degree is going to be uh, when the wave is what moving from left hand side to the right hand side so here 45 degree the wave will go to get rotated by 45 degree in anti-clockwise direction and here when it passes through the ferrite material 45 degree in clockwise direction okay so both the rotation they are in opposite direction so finally the electric field is restored in vertical direction and the wave is collected without any attenuation on the other side now we are focusing on what the propagation in the reverse direction so here at the entry you can see that the field is vertical when it reaches when it uh, passes through what this ferrite material the wave is what rotated by 45 degree in anti-clockwise direction if you observe the wave from what the right hand side okay if you are observing it from here so you'll feel that okay there is what rotation of the field by 45 degree in anti-clockwise direction now the same field it passes through this mechanical twist which is what designed to rotate the field in what anti-clockwise direction so what happens that the same field it gets further rotated by 45 degree and the total rotation now gets added 45 degree from this ferrite material and 45 degree from this mechanical twist so what happens that the total rotation of the field becomes what 90 degree now the electric field it has become what horizontal now this horizontal electric field it passes through this lossy material so what happens that there will be what since uh, this lossy material is what flat okay it's horizontally placed and the electric field that also has become what horizontal in nature so there will be what strong interaction between the lossy material and the electric field and the wave which will be delivered at uh, on the left hand side that it will be very very small so if the if the loss is what good enough then you can say that almost no wave is what collected at uh, on the left hand side so you can see that the behavior is what non reciprocal in nature and you can use this device as what isolator isolator means what your signal when uh, now it is represented as what two port device isolator okay so there will be what flow of the wave from left hand side to the right hand side okay without any attenuation but when the wave is what passing from right hand to the left hand side so there is what heavy attenuation of the wave so you can see that if anything happens on this port that is what if a mismatch is taking place on the uh, on the right hand side so wave if, if it is getting reflected back so that wave will never reach on this port that is what on the left hand side so in this way we say that the two ends they are isolated if the direction of propagation changes so there will be what connectivity between port number one and two in one particular direction but there won't be any connectivity between port number one and two when the direction changes so this is called as what isolator okay so the gyrator and these isolator these are two non reciprocal devices now one more device is there is uh, uh, miss that device which is reciprocal in nature it is two devices so uh, this is what attenuator and uh, match termination these two 
are important devices mass termination and attenuator so i won't take much time for this because simple to understand because simplicity is what because of it is reciprocal in nature that's why so we'll start with what mass termination so we have been uh, talking about what waveguide so i said that waveguide it's a hollow structure which is designed to carry em energy from one end to the other end okay but uh, what happens that a situation comes where uh, we want to end this uh, waveguide okay so this is the end of the waveguide circuitry so actually how to provide this end so shall this uh, the i will name this port as one this is port number 2 okay so what happens that suppose i have a system which comprises of what combination of uh, this waveguide okay like this uh, let us consider that it's a uh, it is what here there is a source okay and uh, it's an amplifier okay so here i have kept isolator and here there is amplifier and uh, <clears throat> from that amplifier i am what collecting the output so here you can see that uh, this this uh, uh, this amplifier is what uh, this part but this first block it is actually comprising of what waveguide and the last uh, box that also is comprising of waveguide so you can see that the wave guide is what two port device so from this end you are feeding some signal here it gets amplified and here you are getting you are collecting it okay and uh, so you can see that this end is what uh, actually connected to a measuring instrument okay but suppose uh, if it is not done like this port is what there is not connected to any measuring device then what to do with this port actually Sh uh, shall we keep it uh, as it means open or uh, just sim simply in order to close this uh, second end you you can put a metallic plate which is suitable condition actually so both are actually undesired condition you cannot keep the waveguide uh, port open or short okay because if it is not used being used uh, why because uh, the waveguide when it is kept open so actually inside the waveguide it's a em wave which is propagating so what happens that the em wave it keeps traveling when it finds that the other end is what open so it will try to come out from that open end and open end means what the the environment the environment you are knowing from the eme theory that it has got impedance of what 377 ohm and the waveguide impedance it depends on which kind of mode is there so if it is t10 mode so it it's around 540 uh, ohm so 540 ohm and here it is 377 ohm so there will be what mismatch in the impedance so if mismatch is there then what will happen that uh, the wave it will uh, get reflected back and a standing wave will get formed okay inside the wave right and if you are suppose short circuiting it so for short circuiting case the entire em wave will get reflected by back why because this time the wave guide impedance because of t10 it is still 540 suppose ohm but short circuited in so in practice is what zero okay so entire wave wave will get reflected back and you will get what once again a standing wave bit but with higher peaks so this situation we whenever we deal with very high frequency signal so the circuitry they are designed in such a way that there should not be any standing wave because the significance of standing wave is what that inefficient transmission of uh, power so we don't want that so what what is done so we go for what mass termination actually if that port is not being used so mass terminated mass terminated means what there should not be any reflection of the wave okay so you make certain arrangement so that there should not be any reflected quantity so how it is done so once again we take the help of what waveguide only okay but this time it's not a simply waveguide it has become a device that name of the device is what mass termination okay which is simply modified form of what waveguide only so how it is pre uh, pre uh, prepared this match mass termination so you have to keep in mind that the mass termination the role of the means what that whenever it is used to terminate any or end of the waveguide in a big circuitry then 
the wave should not get reflected back that's it so what is done in that case it's a single mass termination so it's a single port device but waveguide is what two port device so what is done first you short you uh, just block this one end with the help of a metallic plate like this now if suppose any wave is sent into it so what is going to happen it will keep propagating like this it will hit this wall it will come back so reflection is there what we have we have to do that we have to take care that this reflected signal should not go back okay so what is done i will just draw the two dimensional wave diagram and i'm observing it from this side okay so front view so this end is what short circuited now when wave is entering into it it will propagate it will hit this wall and it will get reflected back and my goal is what just to uh, make sure that this reflected signal should not move out of this waveguide it should die inside this only that is our aim so what we do we take the help of what lossy material so you just introduce lossy material inside it so it's a tapered lossy material you cannot have a shape of the tear of this lossy material uh, similar to the shape of what waveguide means rectangular or square uh, tear, this lossy material it should be always taper in nature and the length you have to choose in such a way that okay we will talk about the length later on now what happens that let us understand the concept then later on we can club the concept of what length now when a wave is what entering into it so i will use a blue color okay now it's a t10 mode wave is what vertically upward that is electric field is what vertically upward and it is propagating inside so what happens that as this wave propagate inside this mass termination it is going to interact with what this lossy material so if i draw length versus what power so when it enters so the power it will have certain amount of power but as it moves or it progress further and further then there will be what drop in the amount of power so by the time it reaches to this short circuited plate uh, shorted end so it's attain uh, its power it has got reduced to a good extent and now since it's a short circuited in the wave it will get reflected back so reflected quantity that too has to pass what through this through this lossy material so once again there will be what attenuation so already suppose the wave 50 or 60% or 70% it has already attenuated now out of that attenuated quantity which is now which has got reflected it will travel through this lossy material and once again the attenuation of that signal is going to take place so by that end when it reaches once again to the input port its magnitude has got reduced to a great extent and now since it is very it has become very very small so it's uh, the quantity which is uh, which has got reflected back and when it comes inside this uh, suppose device now this matching device let us consider that it is connected here so when it comes here inside this waveguide okay so its magnitude is so small that the standing wave created will be very very small which is neglected generally now how much uh, this attenuation you want that totally depends on length so if the length is good enough then the reflected signal will be uh, negligible or you can say there is no reflection at all at all that is not possible but there is very small so how much attenuation uh, so how much uh, reflection you want to achieve that totally depends on uh, length of the the lossy material and of course the cross sectional dimension but unfortunately the cross sectional dimension should not be equal to the what cross sectional dimension of the waveguide it should be always taper in nature that's why you should have a uh, longer length so this is what mass termination same is the concept for attenuator now attenuator when i so uh, the attenuator uh, this attenuation is always declared by the manufacturer that this device will provide 3 db attenuation or 10 db attenuation or 20 db attenuation which once again depends on kind of application so the concept is same but of course attenuator is a two port device whereas the mass termination it's a one port device okay so termination no? so one end must get terminated okay so here in case of uh, attenuator
Now the lossy material it is placed in between. I will use red color. So here, now this is not ferrite I understand. It's a lossy material, okay? So if it is a lossy material, then, uh, and the sh of course, uh, shape, see the per shape of this lossy material, it is shown like this, okay? It means that whether it is ferrite material or lossy material, the end, both the end should be what tapered. You cannot place a straight box like uh, block like this. Do not do that. It should be always tapered in nature. Now, uh, one, I, I've already said that how much attenuation of the wave is going to take place that depends on the length of the lossy material. Now it's a reciprocal device in nature. So if a T10 mode is applied and that wave it passes through this lossy material, then how much uh, attenuation you want accordingly the length is chosen. So once again, if I draw the diagram length versus the power. So if I consider this length is what suppose L. So 3 dB attenuation you want. So initially, suppose one watt is there, then if, when it passes and travel the entire length here, so the power level will drop by what? 3 dB. So it is what? 0.5 power of maximum power, okay? So maximum power is here. So half of the watt. So you can say that this device is what? 3 dB attenuator. And same thing is going to happen if the wave is what passing the light. So it won't make any difference whether you use a signal from left to right. So, so here we have a device S1 that is going to be what equals to S21. Okay. Means what? Uh, wave is uh, feed from port number one, and here wave is applied at port number one, and it is moving to port number two. So what will be the direction? Since both the quantities they are shown equal, it means that they are reciprocal in nature. So this is the condition for what uh, for a device to be reciprocal in nature. If it is two port, if it is three port, then it can be S13, S31. Okay, like that. So you have to just increase the number of this S parameter. Now, this is attenuator. So this also we are having in, in our uh, lab. Now, this is what fixed at its variable. Length, length of lossy material which is played away guide right? that cannot be valid. Okay, so what is some different now? I will use uh, sir, you are, uh, lossy material shape. Sir, your voice yes, sir. is breaking. That's three, sir. Okay, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Sir. Hello. Uh, hello. I just speak something. Hello. And uh, now it is okay, I think. Ha, uh, is it okay now, sir? Yes, sir. Yes. No. Okay, sir. Okay. Ha. Uh, so what is done here? It's a waveguide, and here a slot is created. Okay. Now this uh, uh, structure, it is what placed here. This. So we don't have this kind of uh, uh, on that. Similar arrangement is there, but the mechanism is different. Okay. So what happens that now what I can do, uh, see this portion, just by applying a, a force on it, I can insert this paper material inside the waveguide. So if I draw it here, two dimensional front view suppose from here this side so it will be like this okay now just apply uh, by i can uh, how much portion of this structure lossy material should be inside the waveguide or 
that totally depends on what uh, it can be adjusted mechanically. So I can have a very small portion of this majority of the portion outside and small portion inside. So now here, uh, how much portion is there inside the wave right? that will decide the amount of attenuation because the attenuation totally depends on the interaction between the lossy material and the wave. So if major portion of the lossy material is what interacting with the wave, then the loss will be more. And if less portion is interacting with the wave, then the less attenuation will be there. Okay, so how much attenuation you want? Based on that, simply you insert that amount of portion inside the waveguide. Okay, and when a wave it is passed into it, it is going to what? Interact with it. So here in the second case, you can see that very small portion of the dielectric material, sorry, the lossy material is inside the waveguide. So less amount of wave they are interacting, less amount of electric field uh, they are interacting with what? The lossy material. So loss will be lesser. So this is the, the nature of what? Variable attenuator. So we have uh, now learned the variable attenuator, then mass termination, then phase shifter, which is uh, non reciprocal in nature, and uh, uh, this isolator that also is non reciprocal in nature. So I think uh, it's enough for what passive devices, reciprocal and non reciprocal. If you have any query, you can ask now.